Coming up on Arirang News, the number of coronavirus cases in South Korea is approaching 900, with several dozen more confirmed this morning, along with another death. President Moon is in Daegu, where most of these cases have come from, to comfort the people and encourage quarantine workers. The CDC in the United States raises its alert level for South Korea, urging Americans to avoid all non-essential travel to the country. At the same time, South Korean nationals are being refused entry to a growing number of countries or quarantined on arrival. And South Korea's ruling party, government and presidential office pledged to pass an extra budget and release emergency funds to fight the virus and help businesses that have been affected by it. It's 4 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. Dozens more cases of the coronavirus confirmed today here in South Korea, most of them again in the city of Daegu. And there have been, now been nine deaths in the country so far. With the details, we have our Hong Yu on the line. Yu, Daegu is the epicenter of the outbreak in Korea. That's right. The number of newly confirmed patients jumped by 60 from the previous day, raising the total number of cases to 893 as of Tuesday morning. The majority of the newly confirmed cases, 49 of them, are from the southeastern city of Daegu and the surrounding Gyeongsangbuk-do province. Out of all confirmed cases nationwide, 499 come from Daegu, and more than half of those cases were traced to members of the religious group Shincheonji. Local authorities said they're stepping up efforts to track down the remaining Shincheonji members for a thorough investigation. According to the Central Disaster Headquarters of the Korea Centers for Disease Control, it will receive the personal identification number, phone number, and home address of the members. It also urged believers of these religions to stay home. And as cases continue to surge in Daegu, the government will prepare 1,600 more beds for COVID-19 patients by Sunday. Meanwhile, one more death was reported on Tuesday, raising the number of coronavirus-related deaths in South Korea to nine. The most recent victim is a 68-year-old female in Daegu who had been hospitalized for pneumonia. After she died, it was confirmed that she had coronavirus, and the health authorities found out that she had contact with one of the Shincheonji patients. The domestic death toll could rise as six patients are in critical condition and 14 are relying on respirators. Now, you, South Korea's health authorities, of course, are working 24-7 to try and contain the virus. What measures are they taking now? Well, Prime Minister Jung se gyun headed to the virus-hit city of Daegu after a cabinet meeting this morning to lead the government's containment efforts. During the meeting, Jung said that this week is a critical juncture to assess whether COVID-19 will spread nationwide or not, and that preemptive and active measures are needed more than ever. In an effort to stabilize the supply of face masks, the government limited mask exports to 10 percent of the total production. The government is also taking control of the distribution of half of those masks produced in Korea. This measure will apply from Wednesday to the end of April. Back to you, Devin. All right, Hong Yu reporting there. Thank you. Now, President Moon Jae-in said today that the government is directing its full capacity to containing the spread of the virus. Moon himself is in the southeastern city of Daegu, the epicenter of the outbreak in Korea, to comfort local residents as well as encourage local officials and medical and quarantine staff who are working around the clock. The president said the battle needs to reach a turning point this week. The Moon also reassured the public that the government's maximum containment efforts do not mean a lockdown of the city, but rather taking more thorough measures to block the transmission and spread. There's been speculation that Daegu itself could be cut off and isolated. The president also pledged to look at support measures to ease the socioeconomic damage on top of the swift use of emergency funds. Moon said that designating the city as a special disaster zone is not enough, promising further fiscal support, including a supplementary budget. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has raised its alert for travel to South Korea to level three, the highest level. According to a notice on the CDC's website on Monday, American travelers are urged to, quote, avoid all non-essential travel to South Korea due to widespread community transmission. It also said access to medical services is limited in areas where the outbreak has been reported. 
The CDC's highest warning level was also issued for mainland China. Japan remains at level two. A growing number of other countries, meanwhile, are refusing to admit people from South Korea or letting them in only if they're quarantined or tested. This has meant some tourists have had to fly straight back home or have been quarantined and are unable to leave. Park Se-young has more. More countries are saying no to tourists from South Korea and asking their own citizens to avoid traveling to the country in order to contain the spread of the novel coronavirus. According to Seoul's foreign ministry, six countries, Israel, Bahrain, Jordan, Kiribati, Samoa and American Samoa are prohibiting entry to foreigners who have been in South Korea within the past 14 days. And as of Monday, 13 other countries, including the UK, Brunei, Kazakhstan, Macau, Singapore and Thailand, imposed restrictions on those entering from South Korea, such as placing passengers in quarantine or conducting health checks. These countries have also advised their citizens to avoid traveling to South Korea. And the list is only getting longer. Starting Tuesday, all travelers entering Taiwan from South Korea will be quarantined for 14 days. Also from Tuesday, Hong Kong will ban entry to non-residents arriving from South Korea. Mauritius has also officially announced an entry ban on South Koreans. The island on Sunday reportedly stopped four South Korean tourists with fevers and transported them to a hospital. The remaining 30 tourists without symptoms were sent to a quarantine facility. The South Korean foreign ministry has lodged a protest over the island's move without prior consultations and urged a prompt resolution. In Vietnam, the local government of Da Nang put all people coming from Daegu, including 20 South Koreans, into temporary quarantine at a local hospital on Monday, again without any prior consultations with Seoul. In Ho Chi Minh City, three South Koreans from Daegu, two of them who are not showing any symptoms, were quarantined. The Vietnamese government has already advised its citizens to refrain from traveling to South Korea, and Vietnam's Bamboo Airways will suspend all flights to South Korea starting Wednesday. Mongolia will halt all flights to and from South Korea from Tuesday until March 2nd. Park Se-young, Arirang News. South Korea's foreign minister says Israel's ban on South Koreans coming in because of the coronavirus is excessive. Speaking with Yonhap News Agency in Geneva on Monday, Kang kyung hwa said sending people back after they've already entered the country is different from restricting them from entering in the first place. South Korea, she said, is monitoring such measures on a country-by-country -country basis and its diplomatic missions are working to dissuade countries from taking steps that are excessive. Israel's entry ban caused flights to South Korea to be suspended, stranding people in Israel. Israel laid on two chartered flights in cooperation with Seoul to send about 400 South Koreans home. South Korea and the U.S. are looking at scaling down their joint military drills next month due to the coronavirus outbreak. That's according to U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper, who was speaking to the press at the Pentagon Monday after talks with his South Korean counterpart, Jung kyung doo Jung explained that any changes to the drills won't impact the Allies' combined defense posture. The two sides still have computer-simulated training exercises planned for next month. The World Health Organization's Director General says that although COVID-19 has the potential to become a global pandemic, it's not one yet, according to the WHO's criteria. In a daily briefing on Monday, Dr. Tedros said if the WHO decides to use the word pandemic, it'll be based on an ongoing assessment of the geographical spread of the virus, the severity of disease it causes, and its impact. The misuse of the word pandemic, he said, would only cause panic. The WHO chief also expressed concern over the rise in the number of cases in South Korea, Italy and Iran. The coronavirus outbreak continues to spread worldwide, with Iran and Italy getting hit especially hard. Iran's health ministry confirmed a total of 64 cases and at least 12 deaths as of late Monday. That makes Iran the country with the highest number of deaths after China. Elsewhere, Italy announced Monday that 229 patients have been confirmed and seven have died from the virus. Around 30 others are said to be in critical condition. In the U.S., nearly 20 new cases were reported Monday, bringing the total there to 53. China is reporting a slowdown with some 500 new cases on Monday, the sixth straight day that the reported figure has been below 1,000. The Chinese authorities said as of Monday, the country has nearly 77,700 infections and at least 2,660 deaths. 
As China struggles to contain the outbreak, it's decided to postpone one of its most important annual political gatherings, dubbed the Two Sessions. It's the first time it's done that in decades. Yi Sung Jae reports. China's top legislature approved the draft decision on Monday to delay its one of its most important political gatherings slated for March as the country tries to stem the COVID-19 outbreak. The third annual session of the 13th National People's Congress was originally planned to kick off on March 5th in Beijing, but will now be postponed for the first time since China's Cultural Revolution decades ago. The announcement comes as Chinese officials also postponed the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. That was slated for March 3rd. Combined, the two events are known as the Two Sessions and are considered one of the grandest events on China's political calendar. China's legislature uses the gatherings to review the government's work over the past year and to share its economic and social targets for the coming year. Local analysts say the postponement is a first in the history of the Chinese Communist Party as it hasn't happened since the country's reform. Others say the decision to delay the sessions indicates that Beijing's top priority right now is tackling the COVID-19 outbreak. It's not yet known when the two sessions will be rescheduled, as watchers say it'll depend on how epidemic prevention and related control work evolves. Yi Seungjae, Arirang News. Officials from South Korea's ruling party, government and presidential office gathered in Seoul this morning for an emergency consultation on the outbreak. Among other things, they agreed to approve an extra budget and emergency funding to fight the virus itself and to help local businesses that have been hurt by it. Our Kim Dami has the details. Vowing to pour all its efforts and resources into tackling the coronavirus crisis, South Korea's ruling party, government and top office are pledged on Tuesday to draw up a substantial supplementary budget as quickly as possible. If approval of the budget is delayed, an emergency financial order should be invoked to ensure the funds are freed up. Finance Minister Hong Nam-gi said that instead of waiting for a supplementary budget to pass the National Assembly, the government should dip into 1.6 billion U.S. dollars worth of reserve funds. He added the first relief package will be announced by the end of the week. Specifically, the three sides will unveil unprecedented measures for small businesses that are beginning to buckle due to the financial toll caused by the outbreak. The measures will ease the burden and difficulties faced by small businesses like those in the tourism industry. It's also essential we provide much-needed aid to Daegu and the surrounding Gyeongsangbuk-do province. Ensuring a sufficient supply of protective face masks was also on the agenda. As the demand has been rocketing amid the outbreak, officials will distribute masks for free throughout public institutions. As the supply remains unstable, we've decided to provide a certain amount of masks to public institutions like Nonghyo. New mask-related measures will also include limiting mask experts to keep all locally produced masks in the country. To stop the virus spreading from the Shincheonju trip of Jesus, government officials are considering whether to shut down all Shincheonju-related facilities and impose a thorough quarantine process for all of its members. Shincheonji is the religious group from which a large number of the confirmed cases in South Korea originated. In addition, the three sides once again have pledged to tighten quarantine steps in Daegu and Gyeongsangbuk-do province. Kim Dami, Arirang News. As a way to try and stop the virus from spreading, this whole metropolitan government has decided to allow cafes and restaurants in the capital to use plastic straws and cups, items which had been banned. Officials say the use of disposable goods will be allowed until the outbreak ends. The central government has already eased such regulations in airports, train stations and bus terminals. South Korea has restricted the use of disposable cups and dishes since August 2018 to reduce plastic waste. Residents of Daegu, the South Korean city hit hardest by the coronavirus, are scrambling to get protective face masks, which are in short supply. But the fact that people are lining up in large numbers to get them poses risks in itself. So the government's going to try to distribute them directly. Kim Sung-min reports. 
Hundreds of shoppers lined up in front of a large retail store in Daegu even before its opening time. They arrived early to buy face masks as the supermarket chain has its high-demand item back in stock. The South Korean government has announced that it is stepping up efforts to stabilize the supply of face masks in the southeastern region, which has since 60 percent of all the coronavirus cases in the country. Individual shoppers are still limited to 30 masks per person. I'm finally able to purchase these masks. I've been here since around half an hour before the store opened its doors. I now feel the shortage of face mask supplies, and I'm a little anxious because it's like a scene from the movies. The Food and Drug Ministry has prioritized the supply of face masks to Daegu, already designated as special management zone, and have sent 2.2 million masks to the city. Of that, some 1.4 million masks will be sold at a cheaper price than normal at eight large retailers in the region from Monday until Wednesday. The remaining 700,000 will be purchased by the Daegu Metropolitan Government and distributed to medical staff and a low-income bracket. But there are worries that people could catch the virus while trying to get hold of the masks. It was a nerve-wracking two hours waiting in line because so many people were packed in one place, raising the risk of infection. Despite many citizens trying to cope with the situation in a rather calm manner, worries still linger that crowds flocking to retail shops may lead to additional infections. Kim Sung-min, Arirang News. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Yuanta Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you as always for making time today. Good afternoon. So fears of a coronavirus pandemic caused Wall Street to fall overnight by the most in two years, a thousand points off the Dow, closing three and a half percent down. European stocks even worse off. What's the story in the global markets? As, as you said, the Wall Street sold off on Monday, um, 24th of February, to book the worst single-day trading losses since the October 2018, uh, as the number of the coronavirus cases and deaths outside of China surged. Uh, over the weekend, uh, we already talked about this, the South Korea and uh, Italy reported a spike in the number of confirmed cases in the recent days, raising the concern of the global slowdown. Uh, on the corporate side, uh, various um, the airline companies and the casino operators, uh, anything related to retails, uh, shown a massive decline in the shell prices in the U.S. Uh, also followed through, uh, the Japan have shown a sharp decline as of uh, morning today. Uh, it fell as, low, uh, as about 3% in one day and Tuesday. Uh, also, uh, including Korea, um, the other country like Italy have shown the biggest rise of the additional cases that has resulted into the biggest drop of 5.4 percent drop for the FTSE MIB index for Italy. Uh, all in all, the global market yesterday have shown a massive decline. A one day decline of the MSCI World Index was as much as 3.5 percent from the peak of the a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, it has declined by about 5% from its peak. Right. Well, uh, Korean stocks, though, on the other hand, they're up today. Investors may be thinking that uh, yesterday's sell-off was, or the recent sell-off was a bit much, or what's happening there? Sure. Um, if you look at the yesterday's price movement, uh, Kospi have fallen much faster than most of other markets. Uh, it has fallen by 3.87% yesterday. And Kostak was down by more than 4.3 percent. Uh, as I said, the MSCI index from the peak to the bottom, uh, it declined by about uh, 5 percent or so. But Kospi, when it down, went down yesterday, uh, it went from uh, 12,200 plus to uh, 12,100 or below. Today, it went down to as low as 1,270 or so. So uh, obviously, the decline was much faster, and that's why uh, there had been a rebound today. Today, Kospi closed about 1.2 percent up, and also the Kostak is up about 2.76 percent after falling so much yesterday. Uh, all this is because of the president uh, have said that the government should uh, do all the possible measures to boost the economy, uh, including the supplementary budget of spending about 20 trillion won worth of uh, uh, budget. And also, uh, there's a chance of a Bank of Korea rate cut 
uh, on Thursday. We're not sure whether that will actually occur, but nevertheless, uh, I think that just like what China did, uh, Korean government needs to do all measures to boost the economy uh, to cope with this current event. Uh, a lot of people are uh, doubting and worrying that the Korea's the coronavirus incident is probably following the mimicking the Chinese uh, rise uh, that we saw in the Wuhan area. So uh, I think that a lot of people are concerned about that, and therefore uh, the level of the boosting measures and level of the government commitment is much needed, and that's probably what's happening at this point in time. It does seem like uh, we are seeing that uh, a huge commitment from the government, uh, which is reassuring to some. But now uh, we saw oil prices fall by the most in several weeks, some down more than uh, 4% at the low on Monday. Gold, on the other hand, around a seven-year high. What's your outlook for these commodities? Sure. Uh, just looking at that number on that one day, yes, it is very horrible. Uh, I mean, it's clearly the everybody's moving into the uh, safety assets. Uh, so we call it gold or uh, bonds, the government bonds of U.S. Um, but um, as of today, it seems that people are start to feel a bit more uh, stable in terms of the investing into so heavily into the uh, safety assets. If you look at the oil price, as you said, it fell as much as 4% uh, in the previous session, but today it is up by about 1%. So. Uh, yes, we are worried about the economic recession, but we think that the uh, level of the reduction in production as well as supply and demand area, we think that oil should stabilize at well above $50. So uh, any prices nearing $50 uh, will have a trigger of going uptrend. Uh, any prices above 55 will have probably downward pressure. So. We are, I think, a very uh, small band of box trading for the oil prices anywhere between 50 to $55. As for the gold, also, as you said, uh, it has sharply risen. Uh, if you look at just a few weeks, uh, gold price has gone up by more than 7%. Uh, that is quite a quite significant move. Uh, but uh, recent uh, trading, uh, gold price seems to be stabilizing. Uh, it has fallen by about 2.8% from its peak. Uh, so clearly we are seeing some stabilizations. Uh, we think that the government boosting measures and the international cooperation in terms of tackling this issue of coronavirus uh, incident, uh, we think that the economy should recover after the summer seasons uh, uh, or near the summer seasons. Uh, if that's the case, uh, such uncertainty should be uh, minimized. But for the time being, still everybody's still bit uncomfortable. Uh, that's why we see quite heavy volatility in various assets at this point in time. All right, Mr. Yu, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thanks for sharing your insights as always. Thank you very much. Now, Chinese tech giant Huawei has unveiled its new foldable smartphone, the Mate XS. It's answer to Samsung's latest model, but it launched it in an online broadcast instead of at a global tech show because of the coronavirus. The Mate XS uses Huawei's flagship 5G chips, but unlike its predecessor, the Mate X, it uses its own OS rather than Google's Android system. Huawei having been blacklisted by the U.S. last year for its alleged ties to the Chinese government. The device will retail for around $2,700 U.S. dollars and go on global sale next month. Huawei was supposed to launch it at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, but the coronavirus prompted the organizers to cancel it. And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.
novel coronaviruses are spreading all over the world. To prevent the virus from spreading further, it's essential to attend to personal hygiene and take preventive measures. Rule number one for preventing the infection. Wash your hands thoroughly in running water with soap for at least 30 seconds. Rule number two, wear a mask. If you have respiratory symptoms such as cough, make sure to wear a mask when visiting medical centers or going outside. When coughing, cover your mouth and nose with a sleeve, not with your hands. If you develop symptoms such as a